Here we go! And welcome back, everyone, to another 1UP XP show podcast slash interview. And over the last year that we've been doing this show, we've had uh, our fair share of PUBG players and also PUBG workers, if you will. Matram was the caster that we had on. We've had Purdy Curdy. We've had Phase Dids. But I'm excited for this one. I'm nervous for this one because I reached out to uh, a certain person on a certain team. I didn't know if I'd ever get a hold of him, but magic happened. And he's here with us today. Shrimzy! From Sonics joins me today, one of the best players and one of the best teams in the world when it comes to PUBG. Buddy, how you doing, brother? Thank you for being here. I'm doing fantastic. Thanks for having me. Oh, uh, yeah, no problem. Anytime, man. Like I said, I didn't even know this was would happen. I just, you know, shot my shot, if you will. All right, kids, into the DM, and uh, he returned. Uh, and you just got done with PCS uh, 7, uh, which... Man, it was entertaining, but we have some things to talk about when it comes to PCS. And not just seven, I mean all of them. Because it's crazy, man, when you look back at all this. But let's start with you, Shrimzy. Mm -hmm. yeah. How did gaming start for you, brother? I mean, when you look back at it, a lot of us just started playing, you know, Nintendo. And it just kind of graduated to, you know, eventually competition. And now you're sitting mm -hmm. in the pro seat. But how did you end up with Sonics? How did you end up a pro? How did gaming start for you? And how did you get there? Oh, man, that's a long story. Um... <laughs> Gaming just started out as a fun thing for me to do. Like, I just really enjoyed gaming in general. I started out way back in the day. My uh, my dad and my brother actually shared a game called uh, Soldier of Fortune, and yeah. they played it all. They played it all day long, and I was too young; they wouldn't let me play it. So I was kind of like super passionate about it, even though you know I couldn't play it. I, I would always watch them. Um, so whenever I was finally old enough to play it, the game was kind of dying, and I kind of didn't get a be a part of that like culture that or um like the peak gameplay you know i, right. I just kind of was there at the very end um so i always kind of craved a little bit of competitiveness i've always been a competitive person whether it's sports esports just like racing or like just dumb stuff you know being the first one done with something i've always been super competitive uh you sound like so, me in like second grade like I yeah the first one done you know Gotta yeah be done. exactly <laughs> best best person at pe whatever it was kickball you know <laughs> exactly um yeah but uh, i i got an xbox my my mom bought me an xbox whenever i was uh I just turning into a teenager and i kind of fell in love with that playing call of duty and stuff back in the day uh yeah. And then they came out with uh, Black Ops 2 and they had actually had like a competitive ladder. Yep. Because I didn't I ranked. didn't know that like, um, yeah, they had rank or league play, I think it was yep, called. But play. yeah, I didn't realize that like competitive esports was really a thing until I, mm -hmm. I found the league, league ladder, rank ladder, whatever it's called. Uh, so I played that and I got like one of the highest ranks, which really meant nothing because it was just like an online type thing. You know, I didn't know there was a whole competitive scene behind it. Yeah. Uh, but I was really excited for that. And then I fell in love with League of Legends. That brought me over to PC. And then um, PUBG came out. So I just played that with my friend because my friend was really excited for it. He got me to get on it on my laptop with that dirty FPS. And I just <laughs> fell in love with the game. You know, got my first win. And my heart was racing. Uh, since then, I just completely fell in love with it all right so now i have to ask because you know not it's not everyone's cup of tea but why PUBG? so many battle royales have flooded the market now but what drew you into PUBG? uh i guess i really like the realistic aspect of it uh, mm -hmm. um it wasn't too crazy there's nothing like there's not too much going on it's not like you're flying around you're not hooking on to yeah. stuff there's nothing really crazy it's just like if I were to be in a real life situation, it would just be me, a gun, a car, and right, you know, terrain. That's it. There's yeah. nothing, nothing too crazy going on. Everything is kind of realistic per se. Uh, I just kind of like that aspect of. It. Yeah, you're not like bull pulling blueprints out of your butt and you know making a yeah. fort in real quick. You know? No, <laughs> exactly. I, I totally, I totally understand. I totally get it because there are different aspects to each battle royale. And I just like asking that question because there's some people that you know play that game and they don't burn out, but they just love it so much. And then there's others. Mm -hmm. It'd be just like, Oh, apex is my thing. Or, you know, H one Z one was my thing. It's just like every battle Royale, even though they are very different, it has a different culture for each one. And that's sure. what's really, really cool. Um, let's talk about some of your achievements. 
you have a ton of them, and they've all really taken place in probably the last two years. Um, there was something that happened as soon as you went to the Sonics. There was a change, or maybe even just I don't know what it was, but something flipped a switch, and you guys became pretty much unbeatable. There's been a few that you know you've probably taken second or third, but pretty much unbeatable. You have a ton of wins, seven since the beginning of 2020. Uh, that is one A tier win and six S tier wins. You have PCS two, three, four, five in the group stage, and then you have six and seven under your belt. Now, I did not realize, I knew you guys are dominant, but I did not realize how dominant you guys have been in PCS until I looked at the leaderboard or the all the events in the past. My good God, sir. <laughs> like, how, how did this happen? Was there something that you, all the teams that you kind of played with and then you went to Sonics, what happened to just turn that knob? Um, The short answer is... We got Tig, and he <laughs> added the firepower that we needed to complete our roster. Okay. The long answer is uh, we built our chemistry uh, at the beginning of 2020, and then we added the best player in the world, and his work ethic just motivated us completely. He is not only dominant on PUBG, but... He takes his streaming very seriously. He takes his gameplay very yeah. seriously. He takes his grinding very seriously. And whenever you add that to people that were already motivated before and wanted to win and were hungry, um, it just elevated us to a new level of gameplay that we didn't really know we had in us, you know? Yeah. And um, once that started clicking and once we start, you know, once we started winning and got a taste of it, it just never just never stops you know you, know you don't want it. yeah you, you don't, don't want to lose go again. again yeah you never want to lose again and i will say i mean it, it even got to the point where tig started just popping up in my youtube timeline so i was like <laughs> I was, i'd watch it and it was like 40 kills in pubs i was like jesus like <laughs> this kid is legit and then watching in pcs7 i think he had the number one play at the last day where he just slammed on two dodge players went one and then back i mean it was like this, yeah, but it was crazy. headshots. I mean, it was snap, snap. It was crazy to see. Uh, yeah. Tig definitely has something that you don't see in many PUBG players, and I think that is a huge part of you guys, but there is a certain aspect where you guys work together so well. Um, yeah. Like you said, the chemistry is huge. Um, yourself, and then you have Mime, and then you also have H-Win. Um, kind of break that down for me. This is a kind of another question a little bit later, but... How does the chemistry work for you guys? Who's the in-game leader? Obviously, Tig is uh, the fragger, if you will, but how does it all work together? What's the chemistry with you four? Uh, so h the in-game leader. Uh, Mime likes to call a lot of shots, a lot of great suggestions, a lot of great rotates. Um, h kind of sets us up really well early game. Mm -hmm. Me and Tig are kind of like fraggers, but we give suggestions as well. Most of the suggestions are go through uh, h and Mime. They kind of decide together. Yeah. So oh God, really, listen to comms real quick. Seven, there's seven enemies. AKM's two on yellow, which means the other five are in apartments. Two different teams. Please. Grab you till there's no rush here. You guys hear yeah. that? Yep. Say it one more time. So AKM's at least two on yellow. The other five players are probably apps. Unless AKM's two on two yellow. Two. Yeah. There's people behind the apps on orange right now. I see their smokes. Yeah. And I've seen oh, their car up, boys. Try not to pressure them. They might actually clear apps for us. Yeah. Final call always goes to H Win because uh, he's the smartest of them all, of, of us all. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, we've just built our chemistry from the beginning of 2020. It, it just kind of worked instantly, and then, like I said, we got Tig and all kind of worked together. But yeah, the the main thing is just working together as a team and figuring out what you know your teammates do and what you know what they don't do so it's right. very easy to uh, adjust to things on the fly because you know exactly how your teammates work you've just spent so much time with them you kind of know the tone in their voice whenever there's like people close to them or whenever they feel like they're in danger everyone has like a gut feeling you kind of follow that gut it's it's really just about learning your teammates it's really uh it's a really fun thing to learn because over time it just becomes second nature like uh i could be feeling something and then you know, mine will realize that I'm feeling something, so he'll just immediately come to me knowing that e even if I didn't communicate it very well, yeah. that he knows that I'm under threat or I have pressure or I need help or stuff like that. It's just small things like that that other teams, you know, don't realize is super important that we just kind of have naturally. Oh, yeah. It's like being brothers. You know, it's like, you know, when something's up, you know, you know, when somebody like maybe goes quiet, you know, something's bugging them or, you know, but your comms are silky smooth. And that is a big thing in PUBG, too, is the com I mean, Battle Royales in general.
you're playing yeah. squads, you gotta have uh, you gotta have this the comms and your comms are just on point. And it's like, and the thing is, like, someone might listen in to be like, what did they just say? You guys know what you're saying and you know what's yeah. up. So I mean, but the comms for you guys are just silky smooth. Um, yeah. But the last achievement here, your biggest win is probably the PUBG Global Invitational back in 2021, making you guys the PUBG World Champs. What was that feeling like when that happened, brother? Oh man, it was unreal. Like you don't realize <laughs> you don't realize you're going through it at the time. You know, you're just sitting yeah. there gaming with your with your friends. You know, your best friends, and then all of a sudden, you guys are standing up on a stage with the check that reads 1.3 million dollars, and <laughs> like, you know, it's crazy. You don't you don't you don't believe it at the time, you know, you wake up the next day and you're like, wow, did that really happen? Right. So, I mean, I yeah, know, that's, it's just a real feeling. Yeah. That's, that's gotta be the, just, you're playing something that you've always just had passion for, you know, you're doing it for fun. And all of a sudden <laughs> you're holding a trophy over your head. That's, you know, four or five feet tall. Like, yeah, dude, we're the best team in the world right now. Like <laughs> that's unbeatable. But I will say, you know, you've taken that kind of that huge win and continue to carry it. And uh, we'll talk about PGC later, but I mean, <laughs> my gosh, dude, it's just like you guys are at that peak right now. What I mean, when you think about it, and this question's next, what's next? Mm -hmm. PGC, like you got to think the next thing for you guys is PGC. But what is Trimsy's future here in the near future, or even five to ten years down the road? Like obviously, even with Sonics and the team, what do you see for yourself in the near future? Uh, well, obvi the obvious answer is we have PGC coming up next, right? right. So we want to win that. Um, obviously, we're going to do the best we possibly can, whether that be win, get second, get 16th, get last place. It doesn't matter. We're going to do our best no matter what happens. Right. Um, and then past that, uh, it's just, I don't know. I'm a kind of, I'm a live by the moment kind of guy. I'm day by day. <laughs> Off but, the cuff, um, yeah. yeah, but I don't know. Future's crazy. Uh, really obviously. Is. I, I love the Sonics and I want to build them up the biggest I possibly can mm -hmm. past whenever I'm done playing PUBG. So I would love to work with them. I've talked to uh Bizzle about it and um I don't know. We're we're excited for the future, but for now, just play PUBG. That's yeah, it. exactly. Uh esports in the future, obviously, that's where your kind of head and heart is, is esports in, in general down the road. Yep. Yeah, got it. Um, so all right, let's talk about the team. We've talked about how this kind of kind of take took place but you were on the sonics before you know tig and mime and like everything took shape um but how did the team take shape i mean obviously it took a little bit to find the right chemistry like we were talking about um but it seems like a well-oiled machine now but it wasn't at the beginning how did it all take shape take me back what was it three years ago uh so 2019 i was a part of ghost gaming mm -hmm. um they decided to leave the PUBG scene because they didn't feel they were being treated fairly, which right. is okay. Um, I have no problem with that. I love Ghost Gaming and yeah. their whole organization. They did great by me. I appreciate them. Um, and when 2020 was around, I didn't have a team anymore because Drassel wanted to stay on Ghost uh, as a streamer and McCoy didn't want to play PUBG anymore or I don't remember exactly what happened. But anyways, I didn't have a team. Right. So I was looking for a team and... H-Win and Profi were um, were a part of C9 before and turned into Genesis after C9 left PUBG. Yep. Um, so K-Mind retired, or K-Mind went to Team Liquid in Europe, and their fourth player they ended up dropping. So they were looking for two more players, and I trialed with H-Win and Profi, and they really liked me. They told me that I was basically guaranteed on the team after, I don't know, a week, and they're like, we just need to fill out our fourth slot, so let's find another player. We grabbed the mime, played with him for two weeks. We won like every scrim set. We loved him. <laughs> he was uh, phenomenal. And so we just said, this is the roster that we're going to go for 2020. And then Sonics picked us up after their team didn't qualify for uh, events, mm -hmm. which Tig was on the team of. And uh, so he was on the bench for our first two events. Uh, and Profi decided to go to uh, Valorant, try out Valorant whenever it first came right, out. Right, right. Uh, so he was exploring that and we gave take a chance and obviously worked out really well. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, you never look back happened. after that. One. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's basically how it all happened. Oh, <laughs> uh, that's awesome. I love that. You know, it's, it's things like that where, you know, you take a left turn and you just don't know what's going to happen. And all of a sudden it just falls into place. You love to see yeah. it and the work pays in and it's just like, it only gets better, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. It only yeah, gets sure. better. Um, so let's, let's take a, a day in the life of Shrimzy here, like in the, in the competitive scene of a day of the life in Shrimzy, right? Okay. So take me through what your day looks like, because this is what you do. This is your livelihood. 
But like mm-hmm. for me, I get up at seven thirty in the morning, take a shower, eat some breakfast, go to work, do my office job, come home, do a little streaming. But for you, obviously, mm-hmm. it's a very different cycle, if you will. So, what yeah. does the day look like for Shrimsy from start to finish? Okay, so whenever I'm competing, because that's I guess when, what's most important to me. Um, whenever we have a competition coming up or day of the tournament, let's just say, um, usually I will wake up around mm-hmm. three p.m. Uh, because our tournament started at 7 p.m. So I want to be fresh for the tournament. Um, I wake up around 3 p.m. I grab some food, take a shower, do whatever, do my normal morning thing, you know, take care of myself. And then I um, immediately get on and start warming up for the tournament. I warm up for about two and a half, three hours. Uh, <laughs> go into the Go into the tournament feeling warmed up, making sure that I'm precise with my aim and right. my communication, make sure that I have everything that I need, look over our notes and stuff, um, and then go into the tournament. After the tournament's done, I will, or after that day of the tournament's done, I will usually do a little bit of audio view with the team, make sure mm-hmm. that everything that we had in those games either went as well as they could have or what we need to fix for next time, for tomorrow, or whatever it is, but... We'll do a little bit of audio review and then immediately go into streaming for about five to six hours, seven hours, depending on how long I feel I'm okay to stream. Right. You know, because tournaments can be a little stressful. So um stream for five, six, seven hours and then chill out, you know, wind down, yep. either watch some Netflix, eat some food, whatever it is, and then go to sleep and do it all over again. Yeah, and it's it's very funny how close to traditional sports it is. Um, cause like when you talk about VOD review, I mean, like a lot of people do that. It won't be the same day, obviously, but you yeah. know, you look at video to see what's happening, uh, how the plays broke down, what happened if somebody was out of spot, whatever it is, you guys do the same thing. Um, obviously competition, you have the ability to do it right after, um, mm-hmm. which is super awesome. And I've always been curious about that, but two and a half to three hours, man, that's a, I would actually kind of be fried by that time. I was like, all right, time for me to get off. But it's like, <laughs> you got to get that aim right. And uh, like two and a half to three hours, that's impressive. So what do you do? Do you just kind of side question? You just jump into pubs and practice that way? Or how do you go about practicing for the two and a half to three? Uh, I normally do aim labs for about 30 minutes. Okay. It's just a way that I can flick around my mouse for yeah. 30 minutes and make sure that my aim is precise or my um, my movement's precise. Or my mouse movements for size X. And then um go into training mode, make sure my recoil is right, go into TDM, mm-hmm. make sure that my peaks are right. And then I go into pubs, make sure that my looting and movement's fine, stuff like that. Yep. But um yeah, just make sure I hit like every single step so that I have every base covered usually. Yeah, that's I mean, you got it nailed down. I mean, that seems like uh come <laughs> come competitive time, shrooms he's got the schedule <laughs> down. Uh so that's your life. And during competitive scene, um, Mm -hmm. your eyes and mental probably set right now on PGC coming up in November. Yeah. But we just kind of ran through what you do to get ready, but what do you have to do to be ready for PGC coming up in November? Um, I mean, it's about the same thing. I'm obviously my in game needs to be exactly the same, like aim labs, warming up, stuff like that. I need to have that every day. That's just like a checklist that you have to be doing. Yeah. Just keeping, yeah. Just keeping on top. Yeah. Uh, but, Say today, for take take today for example, there the other regions are going on right now, Asia right. and um, e- Europe. Sorry, mm-hmm. for the same event that we just played, but for the other regions. Right. So PCS today, seven Europe. Yeah, yeah. Today, I I streamed PCS Europe and Asia. It was eleven hour stream in total. I played in between, mm-hmm. and I made sure that I watched every single game. I know exactly where most teams are going to be going most every game. Right. Um. From both of the regions I watched APAC back whenever we played as well. Mm-hmm. Um, so basically the only other thing that I'm adding is making sure that I know what other teams are doing from other regions so that whenever we go to international tournaments, you know, I know what's going on. I'm not just going to be going in blind with these other teams that, you know, a lot of teams probably won't know what's going on completely. They don't take it as seriously, but right. for us, we take it, you know, this is our job. This is what we want to be the number one team in the world. This is what we do every day. Right. So, um, you know, we don't want to be embarrassed like last time. Um, <laughs> I mean, you weren't necessarily embarrassed. So you're in the you're in the PGC. I mean, that's a huge thing. But you guys, what got twentieth? We got twenty eighth. Twenty eighth. Um, which there's what thirty two teams. 
32, yeah. Uh, I mean, it was embarrassing last. for us. It, it was, I can, I can see. I, I, I definitely would be upset too. Um, and shout out to the Luminosity boys. I got, at the time, they fourth. were TSM. They got fourth. It was a huge step for them, huge, huge thing for them. Um, sometimes things fall a little bit better, but it seems to me like what you guys are doing differently is your homework. You guys are studying. Like you said, you're watching those events. You know where everyone's dropping. You know exactly what's happening. And this is your job. So you're doing that homework. You're doing the studying. And uh, that's what you got to do to get ready to go into PGC. Now, if anyone is hearing this and doesn't understand what PGC is, um, PGC is basically the global championship for PUBG. Um, the PCS is the Continental Series. So Shrimsy's in the North American Series where they would take on teams from here. Um, you get a certain amount of points for placement uh, where you finish in the tournaments. And if you get 200 and how many points is it to get to PGC? Uh, it just depends on how depends other on where teams you ranked. do. Yeah. Um, you guys got the automatic bid because you won PCS 7. Um, yeah, the so, most recent regional. Yeah, the most recent regional. So you're automatically in. Um, but I think the five teams that are going, Luminosity was in there. Uh, you guys, and who else is, will be joining? Yahoo, Wildcard, uh, United, and yeah, 22. Right, United, and yep, got you. Um, so yeah, it's a uh, it's a little bit different than last year. The teams are a little switched up. You, I think you and Luminosity are again. Uh, the Yahoo, I think, was there too. United, uh, uh, United. Um, they Wildcard got, wasn't. And Wildcard, wasn't. yeah. Wildcard is now get or was gas cans. Um, mm -hmm. so they kind of uh, jumped to uh, that team, but yeah, that's yep. Um, super awesome to see, and I'm I I I have a lot of faith that you know you guys doing the homework you got you got you got your eyes uh better than 28th uh so uh but uh it's hard to get worse hard to get i mean i'm not it's gonna possible. say it's not possible, it's possible but. <laughs> but no i don't think it's gonna happen uh tick is a fragger and playmaker uh mime is the hungry driven competitor h1 is the tactical leader shrimsy is the i would say a heart but i don't know I mean, you know your team. I mean, heart's not a bad call. Uh, but, I mean, you know, it's, I feel like, and from my input and from watching you guys and watching what you guys have done over the years, I feel like you're kind of the rock of the team, the heart, um, just because you can do it all. You know, you're not you're not the super tactic, but you aren't the super fragger. You're in the middle of kind of holding everything together, if you will. You know what I'm saying? Um, I, I guess the heart. You're the beating. You're the life beat. But I call it more the rock. Um do do you think that's just kind of how you fit in that role, or is it somewhere that you actually kind of positioned yourself to be? Um, I don't, I don't know. I think kind of all just fit into place. I don't think it was necessarily my doing or our right. doing. I think it just kind of happened. But usually, what mine says is, for me at least, he normally says that if my energy or like my vibes are are good we're having a good day. If my vibes are bad or my energy is bad, we're having a bad day. So your personality. You, yeah, usually it comes down to, and my personality is a lot of based on how we're doing. Right, right. So if we're having a good tournament, then we're we're rolling. If we're having a bad tournament, then we're we're struggling. You know. Um, I but, can definitely um, see it because you know when you guys win and they interview you, uh, usually it's you and you have that smile on your face and you are the you, kind of more the outgoing one uh, of the Sonics, if you will. Um, yeah. But. <laughs> yeah, you can definitely tell when you guys are up and down. I mean, that just goes with any team, I think, for the most part. Um, how was your parents' response to gaming from then to now? Um, my uh, my mom specifically did not like me gaming a lot <laughs> yeah. because okay, well, to be fair, I was a problem child whenever I was a teenager. Oh, okay, yeah. So uh, I totally understand her not being insanely supportive whenever I was first doing it. Because yep. I was extremely loud, you know, I was going from job to job or I was going to college at the time as well. Mm -hmm. So um, she wanted me to focus more on my life and what um, you were going to do after college. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So uh, she didn't realize that it would obviously lead up to this. I don't think I, I didn't even realize it would lead up to this. I was just having a lot of fun. I right. loved it. Um, but yeah, it all worked out. And uh the way that I went about it wasn't necessarily good, but I would <laughs> I would recommend people to take it um uh it, put it second to everything else, you know. Right. Make sure that your family's okay, make sure your job's okay, your college is okay, and then do it second, you know. And if it works out, it works out. When were you going to college? Uh what years were you going to college? I went to college twenty seventeen to twenty nineteen. So esports wasn't really an option yet. 
because uh, I know a lot of colleges have esports now. Uh, they don't have PUBG, um, but yeah. they do have you know League of Legends, Rocket League. They have they have a bunch of games out there. And now I think there's over 500 schools that give scholarships, uh, yeah. but necessarily wasn't an option for you at that time because they've just popped in the last three four years. Um, yeah, for most areas. I don't think um, PUBG specifically has a lot of colleges. No. I don't think any colleges have. No, but for other games, there are a lot of opportunity out there. Yeah, uh, as sure. far as I know, I think there might have been like way back when it first started. PUBG might have had a collegiate league. I don't think it lasted very long. I know they like to focus they where they're at have now. A league. Yeah, um, mm -hmm. and then you guys, uh, there was even you—you you were part of um, the PUBG league that they briefly had too, which was super awesome. Um, I don't. You weren't on Lazarus at the time for that. Um, who was it? Ghost? I can't remember the PUBG league. Uh, you mean that they the had, PUBG National League, the uh, National PUBG League. Sorry. Yeah, the one in that was Gale, in LA. Yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. I was on Ghost. Yeah. Yeah, you were on, on Ghost, Ghost for that one. Yeah, that was fun. I love that. That was yeah, super that cool. was awesome. That was really fun. That I, was. I some I, of the I best really time. hope they bring it back. I don't know if they will, but I really hope they do. <laughs> I I really like the NPL. It was super awesome. I don't think it's ever coming back. No, I don't think so either. But <laughs> I hope it did. Uh, you hail from Houston, Texas. You're 24 years old. You just beat Tig into the all PCS team. <laughs> yes. Anything dude. you'd like to say about that? Oh, wait, Tig didn't make it. What? What? You suck, Tig. <laughs> Oh, I want something that Tig didn't. I want something that Tig didn't. Mom, get the camera. Uh, Tig, I'm better than you. It is what it is. You're gonna have to live with that forever. <laughs> you gotta live with it forever. Uh, you know, yeah. yeah, he got more kills, but you know what? You were on the all PCS team. <laughs> Uh, what are your words to any kids wanting to be the next Sonics or on the next Sonics or the next Shrimzy or the next Tig? What are your words for them? Obviously, these kids are watching this, and obviously, they want to do, you know, what a lot of these kids are doing, including yourself. What, what are your words to them? Um, I would say make sure that you're having fun first. Obviously, put your school in front of everything. Make sure your parents are okay with it, and as long as those two things line up, you're doing well. Then you can enjoy gaming, but don't uh. Don't ruin your life for it, okay? <laughs> yeah, don't don't get burnt out on it. Don't ruin your life. Yeah. Uh, best words I can possibly think of. I mean, actually, to be honest with you, it's, it's it's quite simply the same thing. I think a lot of people see it the same way. Um, you know, if sit down and explain to your player, parents what it is, and maybe they yeah. will see it uh, just the same way. Because a lot of parents might not understand. Hey, mom, I'm going to play some games for a few thousand dollars. What? Like, I, I don't, <laughs> yeah. What are you talking about? So, um, I think if you do, you know, like you said, you know, kind of, uh, you know, put. You want to do it, have fun, but at the same time, make sure you're not just ruining it at the same time, too. But is there anything else that you want to add? Um, just say thank you to like my family. Obviously, my mom, and my dad, my brother are insanely supportive now of me mm -hmm. uh, in the gaming, so I really appreciate them. Um, obviously, to everyone that supports me and the Sonics in general, love you guys. Thank you guys for uh, helping us out and being here with the you know for the ride. And uh, thank you for having me on the on the show. I appreciate it, man. <laughs> Wow, now you're making me blush. Uh, dude, no, anytime, <laughs> brother. Uh, like I said, um, you know, we're all doing this for the same reasons, having fun. Like, it, it's now my job to have fun. So I was like, you know what? If I can have fun, let's all have fun together. So yeah, that's a good job to have. Right? Uh, so, all right, Shrimzy, we have a fun little game here that we have with everybody. Um, and I don't know if you ever caught the highlight that I threw up on Twitter once um, that I tagged Tig in because uh, when I had Purdy on, one of the very first interviews I ever did, I said, who do you watch, streamer or pro? His answer who do you watch, pro or streamer? Uh, Tiggleton right now. Tiggleton, all right, yeah. Yeah. Was Tig. Mm -hmm. I was like, rent free, rent free, boys. <laughs> um, and I know you guys are all friends and you guys all poke fun and have a good time, but this is 10 questions to earn a one up. Now, I'm not asking you the same questions that Purdy had because it's been a year later. I got to switch the questions up. These are 10 random, hard ass questions that you have to think really hard and answer, buddy. All right, are you down to take the 10 questions to earn a one up? I would love to. All right. All right. Number one, bud. Uh, what is the perfect sandwich? The perfect sandwich for me, ham and cheese toasted. Ooh, toasted ham and cheese. I haven't had that one yet. That's a good one, though. I do like good toasted ham and cheese. Uh, number two, iPhone or Android guy? 
I'm an iPhone guy. Thank you. Through God. And through. Like, I, like ninety nine percent. I can't. I can't, I can't either. Like ninety nine percent of the people are, that I've had on the show are like Android. Like, no, gross. <laughs> Get it out of your pocket. Me too. Uh, number three, man. Scariest animal. Scariest animal. What is the scariest animal to Shrimzy? I am absolutely terrified of spiders. Don't tell anyone this, okay? Small ones, I don't mind. I'm completely okay with. But they just be all up in your house, in your, in your, you know, in your corners and stuff. You know, what am, what am I supposed to do about it? Who knows? I, I don't know if that one could kill me. You know, <laughs> I'm not a, not a, 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 a arach, arachnia, arachnophobic, arachnus, what, arachnophobic? Arach, yeah, something like that. Something like that. I don't, yeah. I don't even know <laughs> on that one. <laughs> Oh, everyone's going to see it, brother. Uh, <laughs> number four. Favorite sports movie? Uh, my favorite sports movie is Never Back Down. Never it's Back Down? MMA movie. MMA movie. All right. I'll check that one out. I haven't watched it. Um, Number five. Would you rather here, brother? All right. Would you rather spend a week in the forest or one night in a haunted house? Um, One night in a haunted house. Yeah, it's only like 10 hours, you know? You could do that. Yeah, it's week, week in the forest, you got to deal with spiders, brother, and you don't want exactly. that. Exactly. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not into that. Uh, number six. All right, this one's tough, uh, but I got. I, I think you can handle it. Trimsy, what number am I thinking of? Seven. <sighs> no. What was it? Number seven, plane, train, or automobile? Um, Automobile. All right. Number eight, biggest fear. What is Shrimzy's biggest fear? Heights. I am terrified of heights. Ooh, you're a heights guy, huh? That's yeah, the first I one I've had. Okay. I, uh, in, um, so how's flying for you then? Flying, I'm completely okay with. I have no idea why. Could okay, not that's tell good. You. That's good. Could not tell you. Yeah. I have no idea. But I know that whenever, I, whenever I'm whenever i standing on something and whenever I can see out, I'm absolutely terrified. I went to... Right. Um, so it's perception. Yeah, yeah, it's more of a perception thing. Okay. Like whenever I went to the Willis Tower or the Sears Tower back in the day, yeah. is what it used to be called. It's called mm -hmm. the Willis Tower now. And I went up there with my dad, and I was like having a panic attack. It was the worst fear of my life. And my dad was like, "Come out on the glass, come out on the glass." <laughs> and I'm literally like tiptoeing my way over there, and he, there's a picture of me, and you could see me smiling, but I'm like, <laughs> like just that, I, you can just tell I'm so scared. That half smile, just like Get yeah, me I'm like, please, here. please, I don't want to be here. <laughs> Oh, love it, brother. All right, number nine, DC or Marvel guy? I'm a Marvel guy, all, of course. All right, I was going to say, I mean, you kind of look like Captain America. You know, you got the Do hair, I? you got the beard. Yeah, I don't know if you have America's ass or not. I mean, I'm not one uh, to say. I've that. been told I have. I'm that is America's ass. Okay, but all right. I'll, I'll, just we'll take Tig's word for it, right? Uh, <laughs> number 10. All right, last one, brother, and then you're off the hot seat. One song for the rest of your life, Shrim, on repeat. What is it? All Under you can bridge. listen to. What is it? Under the Bridge by Red Hot Chili Peppers. Oh, that's a good one. That's a My classic. Da, 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 da. <laughs> yep, that's it. My favorite song of all time. Shrimzy, you have passed the 10 questions that were one up, and... Bud, you're out of the hot seat. I appreciate you being here, man. I appreciate you taking some time out. I know it's, you know, not a ton of time by any means, but you're a busy man. You have to get ready for PGC, which takes place at the beginning of November. It'll be on YouTube. It'll be on Twitch. You can watch them live up against 31 other teams across the world uh, in Dubai, uh, which is going to be, I'm not going to lie, that's, that's going to be sick because you know their awesome. setup is going to be pretty sweet. Yeah, it's going to be incredible. I'm the South excited. Korean one was, I mean, the Korean one was awesome, let alone, you know, Dubai. I can't imagine. Both the of them were awesome. Yeah. So uh, thank you, man, for being here. I appreciate it. And like I said, uh, you know, do your thing, man. Make sure that PGC comes back to the NA. And you know what? I'm not going to be upset if you beat Luminosity <laughs> out and get first place. But I'm hoping uh, you guys really uh, kind of take that last step and get that crown, brother. Thank you. I appreciate it. Here we go!